So today I want to talk to you about anger. What does it mean to be angry? Is it good? Is it bad? And is there any true way to actually avoid it? A lot of time we get into situations that we just feel emotionally overwhelmed and the best way that we can respond is to just brast, is to just explode. But the thing is that anger is not necessarily a bad thing. The problem is that we feel, we believe that anger is an entity. Anger is its own thing. When in reality, anger is something that we become. We get angry. Anger doesn't exist in this hypothetical place that we say, okay, I'm going to reach that point. No, we get there because of the circumstances. Otherwise, anger doesn't exist. Anger is simply an emotion. An emotions are part of us. It's not bad. It's not good. It's its own thing. But it's not this devil that we make it to be. And the problem is that sometimes our anger takes over us and just becomes a whole new person. And it creates someone that doesn't really exist. I don't know if you can relate or not, but sometimes people get so angry that they become someone completely different. Their emotion, their actions, their reaction, their responses, the way they do things or the way they seek things, it just completely and utterly changes who they are. Now, every one of us can relate to this to a certain extent. But after a while, this can become problematic. And you're here for a reason. And the reason is that, okay, how do I deal with my anger? And the quickest answer is to just not be angry. But that's not possible. And sometimes they say when you're angry, the best thing that you can do is to just take a couple of deep breaths, to just focus on yourself, which is good, in some aspect of it, but I'm sure you could relate to this. I mean, I know that I can relate to this. Is when I get angry, I don't want to take deep breath. I don't want to reflect on myself because I already got to that point that is extremely impossible for me to reflect on myself. Think about it this way. A car is on top of the hill. You put it on neutral. It's going to go down, 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 down. Now imagine yourself sitting in front, wanting to go in front of it and stop the car. What is it going to happen? The car is going to hit you. Yeah, you can slow the car down, but you still get hit. And that hit can, be, can have some drastic effect on you. If you do something to get rid of that anger, it's just going to drastically impact you so the question comes okay then how do i deal with my anger and i'm going to give you a simple analogy that you could apply it to yourself now for this analogy i hope that you as the viewer are not in this category not that it's bad or it's good it's just an example that i want to say so imagine if we were about to meet and i come up to you and let's say you are uh, you're just sitting in the cafe and I come up to you and I say, hey, you know that color that you recently dyed your hair? The blue one that it's showing right now and I hope that you haven't dyed your hair blue or if you have maybe that pink color that you dyed your hair looks absolutely ridiculous, especially when you're wearing that purple dress that you are wearing right now with pink, orange, and sparkling flowers all over it. Now, if you fall into this category, you could just change it to something else. But what would you say to me? What would your response be? Will you get angry? Will you get upset? Will you get offended? Would you react in any way? No. You're simply going to look at me as like, what is wrong with you? My hair is now blue. I'm not wearing that chair. My hair is black or my hair is brown or my hair is pink, whatever. 
haven't recently dyed my hair blue or I'm not wearing that t-shirt that you're explaining to me. You're going to look at me like I'm crazy. Another example is that imagine right now the time is 4.30 where I am. And if I come up to you at 4.30 in the afternoon and I tell you, hey, do you know what? The time is actually 4.30 in the morning. Will you believe me? No. There is absolutely no way that you will believe me because you have your watch, you have your phone, you look at the weather outside, it's sunny, and you're going to tell me, no, you're wrong. This is the principle that we have to apply to ourselves. The problem is not anger. The problem is that we are unsure of ourselves, we are unsure of our situation, and we don't give ourselves time and attention that we deserve. Now, give me a second and I'll explain this to you. The goal of not being angry or not being frustrated or not being extremely on that extreme level is to give ourselves the confidence to believe what we're trying to believe 100%. It's to be there for ourselves. It's to remind ourselves that whatever we do, we do it for ourselves. That I believe in myself. I know myself. I know myself so well that it doesn't matter what you say or what you do. It is not going to change my mind. And if you say something beside what I think of myself, I'm going to look at you with pity. I'm going to look at you and laugh at you and say, no, you are wrong. This is not who I am. Let's say you're in school. Somebody comes up to you and says, hey. You're doing horrible. I feel so bad for you. No, you shouldn't get mad or angry. You should just look at him with pity. Remind yourself of your true nature, of who you actually are, of your own feeling. The problem is that we're not connected to ourselves fully enough to understand our emotion, to understand our feelings. And where we're not connected fully to ourselves, we can get misleaded by other people's thoughts, actions, or behavior. And those thoughts, actions, and behavior can drastically affect us. Not in a good way, usually. So what do we do? We remind ourselves of ourselves. We remind ourselves of the things that we're doing. We remind ourselves of our goals, of our achievements, of the things that we believe the things that you actually are, not the thing that other people want you to be. You are who you are. That's what makes you unique. Every single one of us is different. And every one of us has a different perception, understanding, and way of looking at life. There is absolutely no way that we could be up to everyone's standards. It doesn't matter how good we are. But there is one person that matters the most that we need to be on their side, and that's ourselves. As long as you're on your own side and you remind yourself of you and who you are, what you believe, what you want, you can help yourself give you the tools that you need so when situation comes that is about to make you angry, you remind yourself of your own identity, of your own true self. And that way you can handle the situation much better. Being angry is not fun. It's very bad emotionally, mentally, physically. It can impact you in so many different ways. And not only on that moment, the result can last for a long, long time if it's not given the proper the appropriate time that he needs so before getting angry before anything happens when you're feeling good when you're feeling calm centered sit down and review who you are with you ask yourself what do you believe what do you want what do you seek so if situation comes up you're more prepared you can more easily acknowledge who you are and who you want to be rather than constantly trying to fight 
this battle of getting to this point that doesn't exist and it's usually a circle it goes around and around and around and around that's not fun what's fun is what you set for yourself so ask yourself what do you want to set for you where do you want to be how do you want to be who do you want to be do you get angry okay that's okay what do you get angry about not when you're angry before it what is your triggers identify those triggers and then tell yourself about those triggers so for example i usually get angry when i'm driving okay that's a trigger ask yourself how do you feel about this how do you feel about yourself how do you feel about your driving how do you feel about other people driving how do you feel about other people's acting in different situations then you have a better self-understanding of not only yourself, but other people and other situation. So you're looking at it with more of an acceptance. You're looking at it with more of an empathy instead of an anger, instead of a rage. And when a situation comes, you know what you're doing is right. You know your triggers. You have empathy towards yourself and towards others sometimes. So you're more aware of it. And the last part comes from reflection. So next time that you get angry and those things didn't work, sit down and ask yourself, what made me angry? What was it in this situation that was different? What was it in this situation that impacted me so much that I felt out of balance? And then you go through those steps again. So what do I believe about myself in those circumstances? Okay. What do I believe about the situation with those circumstances? Okay. All in all, you prevent yourself. Now, given the situation, when anger comes, it's important for you to give yourself some time. Even though it's very hard, and I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this is extremely difficult. So if you're having trouble when you're angry to just calm down and to just take a deep breath, especially if somebody says a snarky comment or something that it just doesn't sit with you, it's going to be very difficult. But the goal is that for you to remember that at the end of the day, what matters is you, not what other people want you to feel, what other people want you to think, what other people want you to act as long as you remember you are the center of your own universe and you are the creator of your own reality and you make who you are, that will help you better kind of manage the situation, kind of go through the situation and give yourself the support and the compassion and the empathy that you deserve in any situation. Again, it's not, it's not easy. It's a process. It's not going to happen today. So if you sit down and you do this, you might see a little bit of effect of it, but it's not going to apply immediately. That's as with anything else in life. But over and over and over again, if you do it over time, you will equip yourself with the tools that you need to better prepare yourself when the situation kind of gets out of balance. Taking one step at a time recognize your situation recognize yourself recognize your environment recognize the things that are triggering you and then act the way that helps you be your best self and as long as you are your best self everything else just doesn't matter it simply whew, passes you i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys on the next one